Tara. I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, I would like first to thank you for having me here today to talk about uh, how traveling can promote coexistence. It's something that I really like. And uh, yeah, uh, I've been traveling for the last years uh, since I was a kid with my parents. I was lucky enough to travel the world. And um, then when I was in, during college, I was traveling also with my friends. But it was mostly partying, having fun. I did enjoy it, but it wasn't, I mean, I could feel something, that something was missing inside me. Uh, I wanted something more. I, didn't, I really didn't know what it was. So I met this person who really helped me to find myself. He showed me another way of traveling that, I, that we called uh, meditation. I started doing a lot of meditation for the last uh, years and I knew that we don't need to move our feet, our body to travel. I mean, I could stay in my room and go everywhere without using any drugs, which was really fun. But meditation helped me because I was shy, I wasn't really confident. And I didn't know what to do with my life. I just wanted to do something, but I was completely lost again. So I started thinking of who I was and meditation helped me to know who I was and what I wanted to be. And there was a big gap between these two statements. So I started thinking what it could bring me and meditation brought me what I call freedom because I was finally free to do what I wanted. I was finally free to stop all these voices in my head from all the people around me because they want me to travel in different way. They want me to live their life, in fact. And I wasn't living my life. And so I started to free my mind about everything. I started to think what I wanted to be. And I knew that I wanted to help the world. I mean, as I could, it's a big world, but I wanted to do something. Even if it's small, I started working with an NGO and I started also to use what I knew, photography and traveling, to create this project that is called There Are No Coincidences. There Are No Coincidences started um, one year ago while I was in London. I was um, really tired of just doing exhibitions and posting my photos on Facebook, getting some likes. Uh, I was tired of everything. I wanted to, like I said, help people. So I printed 100 photos and I wrote on the back of each photo a few sentences or a few words uh, that maybe could help someone. And I started to spread all these photos randomly in London without giving them. I just wanted to put them in random places like on a bench sometimes even in the subway, on a table, whatever it was. I wanted to make a connection without meeting the person because I wanted to know how there were no coincidences. This is what I believe, but I mean, some people believe in karma or whatever, but I believe that there are no coincidences. I was looking for the answers. And to be honest, I wasn't really expecting anything from this project. I started with 100 photos, and I didn't know that I could get any answers back. And something really crazy happened. And I got 25 emails back for my first experience. Uh, and what is funny is that I got some crazy and beautiful messages from the people. I remember the, the first messages that I had was from a guy uh, the, photo, the photo was a photo of Iceland and the text on the, the, the message on the, the photo was your next destination will be Iceland and the guy sent me an email and he told me are you following me? I was like no, why? and he said because I'm really going to Iceland to live there next month I was like okay, that's crazy so it started like this, it was the first email that I got and yeah, he was really scared and I was even 
I mean, scared also because I couldn't think that. I mean, even if we wanted to calculate the probability of this thing, I don't know how it can work. But yeah, he was really going to Iceland. But it wasn't. I mean, it was just the beginning of this project. I got also a, a guy who who was really depressed. He was going through a depression, and uh, on the photo was about a maze, and it was written something like dark times are gone and it's time to move on and the guy i could feel it in his email he, he even wanted to meet me but we couldn't make it because i had to go back to casablanca but he he was really happy about it because i don't know it's what it's nothing but it's the sign maybe or a little boost that he was waiting for to get better so yeah, it's something really small, but still, this is what I wanted, and it started to be bigger and bigger. I remember also, I put a photo in a church, I really hide it. Uh, it was crazy, like, to find it, and this girl found that she was from the US. And she sent me again an email, and the photo was about, don't care about what they say, and just go for it. And she told me that, she moved to London and like her family, they weren't talking to her anymore because they didn't believe in her. And she was like, this is the best thing because I wanted a message like this and you give it to me. Even if we don't know each other, you help me. And I started to think that even the smallest things can help us. And how meditation helped me is that, like I said, I started to be confident and everything and I started to shut down all the voices in my head. So this project really helped me to also think how I could travel. And I'm thinking of India, one of my last trips. I went there and I also tried uh, the No Coincidences project. But what, what I wanted is not hear what my family and friends could tell me about India, because when I said India, as Moroccan, a lot of people will tell you it's a poor country. It's dirty, they are Hindu, whatever, a lot of bad ideas and judgments. But I didn't want to hear anything about it. I just wanted to go and live in the present moment. And this is something really also important. This is what I learned with meditation and with this project is that we have to live the moment and we have to forget about the past and the future. We have to live our own life and we have to go for it. And so I went there, I didn't read any book, any guide, any documentary. I just wanted to close all or shut down all these voices and just go for it. And this is how I kind of started to try also to help people with a smile, with sometimes small amount of money, with, I don't know, whatever it was, even in this small room, this small village I went, there were only women bringing back water to their houses and I was just helping them with water which is nothing but they were happy about it and this is how I think we can travel and this is how this project helped me also so after my first experience that I got um, uh, some people really liked it and they wanted to be part of it so we started doing it everywhere from Hong Kong to Brazil to Argentina to whatever. Uh, people really loved it because even sometimes they, they got only three or two answers back. They really liked it because they could make a connection with someone that they didn't know and they were trying their own experience. They, they were waiting for their own answers and that's something that worked. It's something that I, I wanted to share because I wanted everyone to try their own thing and to look for their own answers. And this is a few, some few messages that I got. This is one that I got from London also. They were sharing everything on Twitter, on Facebook, sometimes from emails. And yeah, when people started doing it, they liked it. So now we are like, I could say 25 people who did it around the world. Uh, from different nationalities, Iceland, Moroccan, American, uh, also from UK. And 
I think we are doing it for different reasons, but at least what, we, what I think is that in order to learn something, we have to give first. This is what I, what I learned about this project. And I wanted to help people, but to be true and to, to be honest, I got more help by them because they give me so much love, they give me so much answers back. And I, I like this quote uh, from David Mitchell, who wrote a book called Cloud Atlas. He said, my life amounts to no more than one drop in a limitless ocean. Yet, what is any, any ocean but a multitude of drops? And this is exactly what I think, what, what I am at least. Um, I think that I'm a drop in a limitless ocean, but I, at the same time, I'm also the ocean. And I think that no matter how small we are, no matter how not important and or normal, even if we're not president or famous person, we can bring something to the world. Uh, we can change the world with our thoughts and action. I believe in what we call the butterfly effect, that the love that we give, it goes somewhere. It doesn't come back always as we want, but it, it always goes and hits someone somewhere. And yeah, this is what it's, all this project is about. It's, it brought me here today. So yeah, thank you.